21st century, the global community enters uncharted waters. Climate change, population growth, and increasing human mobility challenge traditional notions of security. How will the world deal with these challenges? Climate change is no longer just a hypothesis. It is happening now. Temperatures are rising. The inevitable consequence, a rising sea level in some areas, drought in others. Livelihoods will be threatened. People with the means to move will migrate, resettling within their own countries or crossing borders. Today, about four times as many people are displaced from natural disasters, many of them related to climate or the weather, as people who were displaced from conflict situations. Compounding the problem, an ever-increasing world population. Close to 9 billion people are projected by 2050. Africa is growing the fastest. These are cumulative challenges. The precise impact is difficult to quantify and will not be uniform, but the trajectory is clear, as is the imperative to prepare. Here at the Center for Mega Progress, we are examining the intersection of climate change, migration, and security to help to shape U.S. policy on these issues. And we will do a series of reports to provide in-depth analysis of these problems. And we will focus on some of the world's most critical regions. Africa as a whole, of course, faces major challenges. And so our first report looks at an arc of tension from Nigeria to Niger, Algeria, and Morocco. Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, 1,400 square miles a year lost to desertification. Lagos, a megacity of more than 10 million people threatened by rising sea levels. Niger, a weak state with limited resources, threatened by crop failures and food shortages. Vulnerable populations unable to adapt will be pressured to move. Niger also serves as a major regional hub for migrants traveling north from sub-Saharan Africa. One of their destinations, the North African coastline, a string of countries that accept European aid in return for hardening their borders against further migration. Recent events in the region have only highlighted the problem. Algeria, marked by internal conflict, also an important front in the struggle against Al-Qaeda. Algeria has experienced almost 1,000 incidents of terrorism since September 2001 and is a major transit country for migrants. Morocco, a reliable Western partner in confronting the challenges of terrorism, faced with freshwater scarcity by 2025, unable to absorb the migrants who settle there, waiting for a chance to cross into Europe. This is an environment vulnerable to complex crises and it is important that the international community understands and plans for this possibility. If we wait, we lose a window of opportunity to get ahead of the curve. If we wait, we may find our ourselves in a situation 10 or 15 years down the road where we just have lost the options, where the windows of opportunity have closed. We cannot miss this chance to act. There are parts of the world running from um, South America through Africa, uh, Asia and into the Pacific, where there's already a lot of stress. Stress caused by water shortages, food shortages, health problems, demographic challenges, and there's been conflict in the past there. In some of the countries, the industry has the capacity and resilience in the governments to deal with these challenges for their citizens. And on top of that, we're going to have the problems of climate change. The current U.S. administration recognizes the urgency of the problem. No nation, however large or small, wealthy or poor, can escape the impact of climate change, the security and stability of each nation and all peoples, our prosperity, our health, and our safety are in jeopardy. In 2010, the State Department conducted its first Quadrennial Diplomacy and Development Review, or QDDR, which identified climate change as an emerging threat and key development priority. Anne-Marie Slaughter was a leader in this process. I think one of the things we often don't appreciate are the security implications of, of climate change. If your land is no longer good, you rarely sit around and accept that. You move and inevitably you move onto land that belongs to others and that creates conflict. The policy recommendation, a new approach. The kinds of problems that we see in the world 
are not just problems that can be resolved by governments working with other governments and negotiating agreements. They are problems that have to be tackled from the bottom up. So the QDDR really lays out a roadmap for elevating development and integrating development and diplomacy. As USAID Administrator Rajiv Shah has put it, Sustainable development is essential to sustainable national security. The world has changed in the last decade, and the development community, starting with our agency, must change too. We have to become development entrepreneurs. The Department of Defense is also part of this conversation. Ever more often, the military is called upon for disaster response. The 2010 Quadrennial Defense Review reflected this new dimension. For the first time, climate change was recognized as a threat multiplier that increases instability in strategically significant regions. Responsibility to address these challenges will increasingly fall to the U.S. military unless a more effective integration and rebalancing of diplomacy, development, and defense is achieved. We are living in a new era that requires new policy approaches. Complex crisis scenarios need to be addressed in a comprehensive way. The division of labor between diplomacy, development, and defense that worked during the Cold War period is outdated. Climate change, human mobility, and insecurity add up. Currently, we don't have the tools, strategies, and resources to adequately address these challenges. The answers that we try to find in addressing these pressing questions will help to develop a blueprint for a 21st century approach to foreign policy.